All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual set to compete at Invicta FC 49, and that goes down on September the 28th. It is a flyweight bout between Pollyanna Botello and Helen Peralta, and happy to be talking to Helen on today's show. How are you feeling just a couple of days out from fight night there, Helen? Oh, I feel great. I'm just looking at uh, food around me, <laughs> making a hit list. Yeah, that must be uh, difficult from your position as like a, a chef and stuff like that. Just uh, do you pull back from the cooking a little bit, or maybe cooking different things in fight camp? How does that all go? Yeah, well, if I am home, I prefer to cook my own food because I have more control to what's in it. I mean, you can eat pretty much anything; it's clean. The problem when you buy food on the street is that they always try to enhance it, and they use a lot of MSG and stuff like that. But my my diet is uh, it's very easy because I'm fighting at a higher weight class. So I don't have to deplete myself. I just have to make sure that there aren't any uh, suspect ingredients. Yeah, for sure. And that segues well into something I wanted to talk about because you had those earlier career efforts at straw weight and stuff like that. But it seems like flyweight has been like a more natural weight category, I guess, from like my layman kind of perspective. Like, does that feel like a more like natural weight category for you there? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, uh, straw weight, I had to cut the weight. So I have to like actually deplete myself to make the weight. And, and because I kept winning, I just kept doing it. But I, then I realized, I'm like, dude, I'm performing about 30% of my ability. If I fly a flyway, yeah, my opponent might be a little bit bigger if they are cutting weight, but I feel so much better that it's, it's, a, it's a big equalizer when you can show up close to 100% as opposed to showing up depleted. Yeah, absolutely. Good to have like the more optimized kind of performance and show, you know, what you're working on and stuff like that. And to that point, I'm kind of wondering who you're working with for, you know, this specific camp, because I was, you know, kind of going through some past training efforts you've had. And it seems like you are always working with like really elite level individuals. Like seems like the, you know, bond with Juliana Pena is strong. I saw you getting in work like last year more so with Abani Bridges. Like who are your main, I guess, like sparring partners, training partners ahead of this one? Well, ahead of this one, because I, it all became like one big training uh, training camp, I did spend about eight or ten weeks training with Juliana in Chicago uh, before her fight with Amanda Nunes. And then from there, I go back home. We work mostly on uh, body mechanics, because it's more important than lifting weights and any of that. And like understanding the movements, I feel like it's better than just doing the movement over and over again. And then for the last portion of my camp, I went to uh, Augusta, Georgia, to train with Team USA Kickboxing. They have some high-level strikers there and, then, you know, different body types. And my opponent is supposed to, is, so she fancies herself a striker, so I have been spending so much time on the grappling, so I decided it was time to get a little bit of a tuna just in case she decides to strike, which I doubt that very much. Yeah, that's interesting because, like, you have, like, the amateur boxing experience, like, a few bouts there, and obviously what you did in BKFC is very well known do you think like based on that like the striking pedigree like maybe she wouldn't be as keen to engage you in the stand-up portion of this fight no i think when you look at my fights from the outside it looks like i'm just brawling but i call it educated brawling so once they get in there with me they realize like oh you know i can't choose you know anybody that sees my fight is like oh if it was me i would just throw a straight punches and you know the shorter distance between two points is a straight line I can beat her to the punch but when they're in there with me they realize it's not just the loopy punches I calculate it very well everything is intentional and I think she'll come up striking thinking she might have the upper hand there and then once she gets hit with one of those haymakers the game plan is gonna is gonna change quickly yeah you very much like seem like someone who like the fight IQ is like a big variable for you when you get out there you can talk about the educated brawling like how much of the fight IQ is like one of the more important variables of your game oh 100 percent. I mean it's not something you can train because when I go and I like, spark people and they show me the video it looks like I, I can see everything coming and I can black and move out of the way but I don't do that intentionally my body just does it so I think I have some sort of I don't know, it, my body just knows how to move in the chaos, and I do make very good decisions in short periods of time, and I'm able to switch it up. You know, if I'm doing something and it's not working, I immediately switch, because, I mean, the definition of madness is doing something repetitively and then expecting different results. So if I'm in there and I'm striking and it's not working, of course I'm going to go for a takeout. Why wouldn't I? And, you know, mix it up a little bit and then come back and then, you know, to see, you know, it's mixed martial arts. It's supposed to be an art supposed to be doing different things when you're out 
Yeah, for sure. And I have seen different photos of you at like grappling tournaments and stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, so many, you know, variables to MMA too. Like, yeah, some grappling could be used to like create openings for different striking exchanges and stuff like that. So yeah, a lot of interesting facets to this fight and just like different, you know, paths that could potentially go, it seems. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really couldn't tell you. They, they asked me earlier in interviews, like, oh, how do you see this fight going? I'm like, I have no idea how it's going to go, but you can expect me to go there 100%. I'm going to go into this fight. I think that it was my last one because I feel like many of my fights go to decision because I like being there so much. You know, to me, the cage is like the realest place in the world. You cannot lie when you're in there, you know. And now that we live in this world, it's just like make the realities and alternative facts and it's all about social media and smoke and mirrors yeah. we lose that like realness of being alive and when i'm in there i feel like i'm home and then when i'm not in the cage i feel like i'm i'm playing like i'm faking it yeah and maybe that lends itself to the you know temperament you were talking about before just being very comfortable in the chaos like maybe a part of that is just like the amount of like productive cage time you've gotten and just being more i guess familiar with such a hectic environment yeah, absolutely. I, I am very, very comfortable when I, I, I'm in there. If you were to like just show my face, you would think I'm making a sandwich, and not in the middle <laughs> of a fight. Yeah, I love that for sure. That's a funny way to describe it but this is a really you know interesting fight and everything like that like if you you know get the w here you'd be four straight specifically under the invicta banner and your opponent being like a seven fight ufc veteran and it seems like there's like a level of awareness as to what she brings to the table like you said she likens herself to be a striker and everything like was there that awareness of your opponent previous to this bout announcement kind of coming your way are you generally one to like tape study on your opponents i guess like what are the big like stylistic proclivities your opponent has they're bringing to the cage uh i know she's a striker i haven't seen any of her fights um my coaches have because the, the my point is when i'm fighting i have a very hard time getting fights and then uh when i do get fights i have a hard time with being the same opponent all through camp it usually changes you know people get hurt or they get what i call the shit or their hair hurts whatever the story is so <laughs> yeah. instead of spending a whole camp preparing for one specific person my coaches add the things that my opponent does well into my camp, but I focus on everything that I know I need to work on regardless. Because if some days or something happens, tomorrow morning I win, there's three other bouts or two other bouts that fly away. I don't care if they shuffle it around and I end up fighting someone else because I didn't, I'm not committed to this matchup. I train to be the best Helen Peralta uh, on Wednesday at night when the fight comes, but it, the opponent doesn't really matter to me. Of course, some of the things that my opponent do were, was added to my training camp. But the things that she usually does is striking, which is my world, and I don't think that's that's gonna be the that's gonna be the thing. I, I feel like once she feels how hard I can hit, she's gonna want to grapple because it makes sense. And I, it's my understanding she's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, so why not use that? I mean, she should. It would be smart for her to try to grapple. Yeah, for sure. And then just you know, the last one there being under that Ultimate Fighter season thirty umbrella, like a very tight split decision to Caitlin Neal and Caitlin Neal versus Hannah Guy being on the card. Like obviously, you're very much squarely focused on the fight you have, but is there almost like a peripheral awareness of like other fights in the division that are going on? Like maybe oh, I could potentially fight the winner of that one, or is it just blinders on for this one? No, well, um, you know, one is the, the Kalen fight, but I guess, you know, um, they had other plans. Uh, but the, the, what I like about the uh, Otello is that she's already been to the place I am trying to go to, which is the UFC. And because of that, there's a lot more in this fight. This is way more a tougher fight than fighting Caitlin, but this fight puts me on the map. So I'm willing to take the risk to fight someone that's more skilled. Because I also feel like when I am put in a position where I have to really fight, that's when I do my best work. When I am pushed to my, my limit, that's when I shine. When my opponents are not too good, that's when I sit back and just let the fight go to the decision because I'm having fun. But when I am in there with someone who's dangerous, that actually forces me to perform better. Yeah, and it's interesting you're eyeing the UFC specifically just because in doing my research on you, I was seeing that you were like, first kind of exposed to mixed martial arts after like the Ronda Rousey Holly Holm knockout and from the account I was reading it was almost like you didn't know who Ronda was at the time but then you saw the finish and seemed to really you know inspire something and light a fire under you so just with the backdrop of that you know being the entry point to MMA in a 
certain sense like how wild would it be to you know have this journey culminate in like a ufc kind of trip like obviously you're putting in the diligent work to get to that point but just yeah in the context of your life journey like what would that kind of moment represent if that came about um it would be cool not necessarily for me for me i'm already in my eyes i'm already champion i'm champion at life and i feel like i have a lot of things going on for me personally however i do want to build a brand and titles and names means a lot to other people. Although it doesn't mean much to me, but it, it's better for when it comes to sponsorships and building your brand. You know, uh, that little piece of paper hanging in your in your office means more to people than skills themselves. So that's pretty much why I would want to go to the UFC. It's nothing like I'm necessarily passionate about. It's just because their name has a lot of value in the market that I am trying to conquer. Yeah, for sure. And just the way you're, you know, talking is very inspiring. Like, I think I was seeing another article, too, where you were saying that you, you know, want to be like a motivational speaker to really just like help people, you know, just grow in their endeavors and stuff like that. Just really like, you know, find the badass in themselves, as it were. Is that something you're also looking to kind of do more down the line? It seems like you're, you know, really great at that. Yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. And, you know, a lot of motivational speakers out there, they just say things that sound cool. They just blowing out hot air. When I speak, I want people to believe it. And that's why I'm using myself as a guinea pig. When I tell you you can be whoever you want, just like look at my career. The first time I went to the gym, I was 27 years old. And I'm competing in some of the bigger stages for mixed martial arts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and like I said before, you've been successful across a few different, you know, martial arts disciplines, combat sports, but I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about the, you know, BKFC run and stuff like that, because it's been uh, quite a while since you've been able to get out there. I'm kind of curious as to why that is. Is it just a byproduct of like more so allocating your focus towards MMA or like what's going on in that sense? Because it's been about like three years closing in on it. It was mostly it, it was mostly a misunderstanding uh, with the contract. That I don't want to go into details because I do want to fight for BKFC, and I feel like they take things personal. Uh, you know, fighters are supposed to be dumb and just follow orders. I am trying to go into sports management, so I have a lot of understanding when it comes to contact and things like that. And we had a little disagreement there, and I think they took it too personal. This is business to me. I'm not dating you. Uh, you shouldn't be getting mad at me. If you get mad at people, you know. We're doing business. You don't get mad at me. We're not that close. Um, but also MMA is a lot more taxing in your body. You know, it's, it's all the grappling it takes a toll on your joints. And I realized that because it takes so much effort, I would have to put a little bit more emphasis into preparing for MMA while I still can, you know, and like the injury is like on bare knuckle. People think it's like so brutal, but it's all superficial stuff. So a few cuts, two weeks and you're fine to go train. When you're in MMA, like the injuries are big because of the grappling, you know, those joint manipulation that's where you're out for longer and that's where you have to go and get surgery yeah so if i'm understanding it's almost like you're looking to pursue mixed martial arts for like as long as you can and then maybe if there's like a certain wear and tear it's like oh i could go back to bkfc because you are right like i've read certain studies where it's like the you know damage surrounding bare knuckle is far more subdued than really other combat sports so is that the arc you'd be looking at in a sense just more so pursue mma now and then maybe the bkfc return like down the line kind of thing yeah because i just like to fight i don't have like a specific goal if i get like a, a nice knockout on um, wednesday and the ufc calls i will take it but you're going to be competing against some of the best in the world like i'll do that for as long as i can hold it however if i don't get signed with the ufc right now i'm an independent contractor and i would love to fight the champion for bkfc I, i'm her only loss and I love the first fight, and I think it was close enough. And I think she deserves an opportunity to show the world that she's the best. Because until she beats me, everybody, she's going to have that hanging over her. She's going to have that shadow over her the whole time. She's my one of my favorite bare knuckle fighters after myself and uh, Joni Bedford, the champion, one of the champions. Um, but I think that fight should happen. And if, he, if they were to contact me right now, I will make a commitment to get that fight done before I go to the UFC, if that was next. But if I sign with the UFC first, then, you know, it's an exclusive contract, and then Bare Knuckle will have to wait. So it all depends, you know, when you're a professional fighter, it's really hard to make uh, plans because everything, your whole career is always hanging on your next performance. So, and because this is so close, and I don't want to look past my opponent because she's a very skilled fighter. So I'm just, you know, waiting to see what happens on Wednesday because, to be honest with you, I don't really know what's going to happen. I am hoping that there's an account, and I am hoping that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> No, it is fair, though. There's a lot of variables. I mean, there is, like you said, a very skilled opponent in front of you. But yeah, just like see where the landscape falls. Like you said, a UFC offer could come in and 
everything like that. I just feel like it'd be, you know, such like a missed opportunity if that rematch with Christine Faria never manifested. Because I think that would be one of the bigger rematches in, you know, bare knuckle boxing history, certainly in the modern age. Oh, I totally agree. And it was such a good fight. And I know that now they're focusing more like on social media views. I'm not big on social media because of my personality. I started to put a little bit more effort because I realized uh, people only care about like followers and views, but you can buy those. And most of those uh, uh, pages are built based on putting money into them. And I barely have money for gas. So I'm not going to you know, invest money on that. The other thing for female athletes is that they always have to wave their ass around to get those views and followers that they so much value. To me, that doesn't have any value, but the society we live in seems to, to think that that's important. So I get it. They can have the little charade going and have their only fan girls fighting lingerie and like, you know, pushing each other around and the whole WWE thing. One of the girls like took off her bra after the fight and then she became a star. Like, I, I get it. I understand that. But you can have both. You can have your little charade if it makes you money. And then you can also have real fights because I, it would really suck if I get old and I show the, the first fight with this thing and then there's no rematch. You know, like, I'm, I'm going to really regret it and I hope that that doesn't happen. I hope that we can get this rematch done. That's curious. Like, some of the facets you outlined there, it seems like, like you were saying, you can understand it to a degree, but are there moments where it can be deflating a little bit? I mean, you're staying earnest to yourself and staying the course and everything like that. Does it ever get frustrating? Like, some people are maybe rewarded for certain outside of combat kind of considerations, or is it more just like you're sticking to your path, working, and, you know, whatever manifests from your hard work manifests more so? I don't get frustrated sometimes because I, it takes a lot of work what I do. But I don't blame the, the girls that do it because, hey, why reinvent the wheel? If, if, you, if you have the personality and you're okay with that, why not use what, you know, the, uh, female, uh, the female power that you have, it's a natural power, why not use it? If that's, you know, if that's something that works for you and it, it matches your personality, I say go for it. I mean, I follow some of those girls just for the tips. You know, I get it. <laughs> I am part of the problem when it comes to that. However, I do think uh, that the promoters are the one making the mistake, not the girls that, that take that route. Because they choose to promote something that doesn't need promoting, you know. Boobs and, and good-looking bodies don't need to be promoted. I think it's lazy that they'll invest so much money and time promoting something that can promote itself. Instead of using that same machine to promote the fighters that perhaps don't have the personality to go that route, but have the skills to actually show up and give the fans what they came and tuned in for. Yeah, I think it's just really about, like, whatever, like, most resonates as earnest with you and everything like that. So, yeah, I get what you're saying in that regard, too. But I really appreciate you making some time to talk before this fight, Helen. You're definitely someone whose fights I've followed for a little bit now, so cool getting to talk to you. But I want to be mindful of your schedule just being in fight week and such close proximity to the event. So to that point, is there maybe anything you might want to add kind of as, like, a parting thought as we're wrapping up here? Oh, I uh, just want to thank everyone that followed my career, like yourself, and for giving me the time to, you know, to put out there another part of myself that people don't see by just watching my fights. You know, sometimes people don't really know how I think because I'm a little bit more of an introvert. Uh, but I am trying to, to let people know that there's so much more to me besides, you know, punching people in the face, which I love from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> but there's other aspects of myself that I want people to be able to see uh, because I feel like you can grow your, like, you know, your Instagram, your pages, like, you know, that thing that people care about. You should be able to grow it without having to, you know, I want little girls to know you don't have to wave your ass around to get where you want to go. It's good to know that that's an option, but that should be plan B. That should not be your go-to. Yeah, good parting thought and everything like that. And just, yeah, again, to reiterate, I really appreciate the time and coming on the show and yeah giving those great insights and looking forward to checking out Invicta FC 49 on September 28th and should be a great fight against Poliana Botello so thanks so much for everything and just yeah you enjoy the rest of your day and looking forward to checking out the fight when it goes down there Helen thank you for having me have a good night